Scissors. Scissors. So um, sometimes you don't want to get motion over the entire camera. What if you wanted several areas where you want to detect motion separately? You don't need multiple webcams. You can do it with one webcam. One webcam. Although you can use multiple webcams. All right, so let's open up. That's uh, another day. Another demo. Definitely. So let's get our camera going again with the Logitech. That always does this. You have to hit the format list after you tell it which camera you want, and then you get the full deal. All right. So we're going to do, um, look at all these formats. We did ha talk about this. I don't remember if we, we talked did about it. We did it. We already did. Okay. Yeah, so it's got all these formats. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go straight to the high res 1920 by 1080 uh, MJPEG. Um, open that and turn it on. We should have, you know what's something interesting, though? Let me go back and just show you. Show me. You can go to color mode and oh, tell it right. to do monochrome, which is weird. It comes in inverted, but it doesn't matter. Look, for the motion detection, it all looks exactly the same. It doesn't it does. care if it's, it doesn't doesn't care care. If it's inverted. So That's let's keep it inverted. Yeah, I'm into it. All right. So now we look weird, but motion detection doesn't care if something's inverted because it's just looking for change. It doesn't matter if it's changed from black to white or white to black. Um, so, all right. So we are... Um, Scissoring. Oh, it... In, I forgot to finish this dim map thing. So what's the thing that um, flips the video? It's this invert should work. Invert and then one zero. It should be zero one, I think. Oh, okay, zero one. No, it didn't do any. Oh, no, oh, we're upside no, down. It was working. Lies. It was working. We're, you Sorry, get it. I was looking You at should invert place. from the graph. Okay, yeah. See how these two are separate? This <laughs> one is the raw camera. You think well, I should. We're, we're just rocking back and forth. All right, and then this one actually flips it so it's like the iPhone. My right hand is on the right side it's of like the screen. It's like looking in a mirror. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's more handy. And then I'm downsampling again to quarter scale. Uh, RGB to Luma, then doing difference, and then here I'm just going straight into JIT.op. I'm not even going into curves. Um, so, yeah, this is basically the same as before, except now we are, we could do JIT.slide too. Why not do, let's let's run it through JIT.slide. Uh, For those of you who are not sure what's happening, we're <laughs> going kind of in reverse to, yeah. Right. Nothing, disregard. All right. Why isn't that? Okay, now it's showing up. If you want to know more about what he's doing, is what I'm trying to say, is you can go to a previous screencast there and we go. get a little bit more information about what he's fiddling with right now and adjusting the levels and making it just so. Okay, so we, yeah, we've gone, just that slide just smooths out the image a little bit. And then we're going to into this thing, P, -jit, uh, sorry, P scissors 3M. What does that do? Let's go in there. So this is an object called JIT.scissors, uh, JIT and I tell it I want one row and four columns, and it's going to give me four columns of output. Uh, you could do four, four rows and four columns, then it's going to give you 16 video outputs. It's going to chop the mm -hmm. screen up into uh, 16, you know, a four by four grid and give you separate video outlets for all of those. I don't want 16 videos no. to deal with. So, uh, and you do any number you wanted. Yeah. Just so, Four, uh, rows one, columns four gives me four, it splits the screen into four vertical stripes, evenly Slats spaced. Right? Video, yeah. That's the problem with scissors. You don't get to tell it, you, you don't get to decide where those boundaries are. No, it just yeah. evenly splits it. Okay, so that's clear. Then we're going into just up 3M and uh, to find the average of each of these independently, sort of separately. And then we're packing all four of those numbers together into a list. So we have a list of four uh, floating point numbers which represents how much motion is happening in each of those uh, columns. So uh, what we get out, in, then we can scale that value. Uh, so we're going to scale. You can scale a list, by the way. Which is new. Yeah. Show me about this. Because scale. So we're, we got this list coming out of this scissors 3M thing, which gives me four pieces. So um, scissors uh, into four uh, columns. Let's, let's just add that in there. So it's scissoring into four columns and doing the analysis to get the average pixel color, or AKA amount of motion. Um, and then we're scaling it. So zero to 0 0.3 is gonna go to zero to one, but it looks like we need a little more than that even. So let's go one point, oh sorry, it's one five. There we go, now we're getting it. So, all right, so now when I move my hand across the screen, I can, all right, well, let's try two sides, this one versus this one. 
Okay, kind of works. There, all right. Um, it's a little too hot though, so let's go two five. And then, all right, so we're going to unpack. Uh, so we packed together those four values in just scissors. We can unpack them one, 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 just means to give me four outlets. There's four elements in my list, I need four outlets. So it's gonna unpack those. And then uh, I have four past. Remember we did the data analysis when, how do you tell when a number's gone past a threshold? I've gone in here and said past, 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 past. So I'm unpacking, going into four separate past objects that are gonna trigger bangs when uh, these values go past a threshold. But they're all these four of these past objects are gonna share the same threshold value, which I'm setting uh, out here on the outside. So I can just sort of look at these bars that are uh, coming up there. Um, also, I want the scaled version. I want to send the scaled thing into here, right? Yeah, same with this, scaled four pasts. All right, um, so when my values in these columns goes past this threshold, it's gonna trigger these banks, so. So again, we've broken the screen into four different columns and it's in theory only when in that column motion is occurring will it trigger the past object because you're going past a specific value. Yeah, um, and we could trig make that trigger a sound, but um, let's, let's just skip that part. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we don't need to recap that. It's all. And we are gonna show in, a, in the next demo how to do this with a bit more control over your space. Whereas he, you were saying that jit.scissors tells you exactly how much that like doesn't give you a lot of freedom for how to divide things up. Now we're gonna show you how to have freedom. Freedom, right? Target yeah, picker? Target picker. Cool. Okay.